Hi, this is uh, Tom with uh, Lee Financial. Can I help you? Hi, Tom. This is uh, Tom Hartju with Integrity Capital. How are you doing? I'm good. I like your first name. Yeah, it's a it's a good name you got there yourself. It's a, good to meet another Tom. So I'm yeah. just I'm just reaching out. Um, I uh, I work as the CMA or the Capital Markets Analysis here at Integrity Capital. And just reaching out to lenders to find details on their lending programs. Uh, is there somebody there that could give me a little information on Leaf Financial? Yeah, I, th I think I can help you. So uh, I handle a lot of the uh, relationships and lending and things like that. So I can I can certainly uh, dive into what we do. Uh, Great. First first question I have is: Are you guys a correspondent? Uh, what do you guys, uh, you know, sort of represent life companies or are you a commercial mortgage broker or what do you, what do you guys do? Uh, yeah, no, we're, yeah, we, we are a commercial mortgage broker, so we don't do any lending ourselves. Um, but we're looking for lenders to partner with, um, that can assist our clients. Okay. Well, I just, just to be upfront, the way we operate as a life company is we work through correspondence. So what that means is we have local representation in different markets, could be by state or region, but we have people that service the loans for us that are the ones that originate them. Um, so we would have you go through that local correspondent. Uh, like uh, for example, in, in uh, you know, Arizona, there's a gentleman over there named Tom, ironically, that handles all of our stuff. And so that's, that's just, just, and we can walk through the files and tell you about our programs, but just so you know that that's, that's the way we work. I would say that's probably about 80, 85% of the life companies are, you're going to have, you know, correspondence. Um, you know, they have to make a decision want to work with you i'm sure they would but obviously i'm sure there's a fee sharing there uh that has to happen so just yeah just an fyi on that um okay so you can you can give me um some details on on the lending programs but i couldn't send or my my loan associates here couldn't send any sort of loan requests to you we'd have to send it to a correspondent who would then send it to you that's correct yeah they okay. they're the ones that are going to do all the underwriting prepping presenting, you know, site inspection, uh, and then they would present it to us. And so we work through them to, to sort of, you know, cause they end up servicing the loan after for us. And so, yeah, that's, that's, that's an accurate statement. Okay. Well, I guess, yeah, let's uh, definitely like to hear what you guys are, are lending on. Uh, but yeah, let's make sure I get in, contact information for the correspondence you work for in our, in our market. And if it's outside of Arizona, uh, if you if you have loans in, outside of Arizona with other correspondents, we do work with the, with the clients nationwide. So just want to make sure we're kind of covered everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what would you like to know? Great. So you you're you're a, uh, a life code then a life insurance company on the lending side. That's correct. We're a life company. Okay. So we, you know, we have a chief investment. I'm the chief investment officer. So that means I oversee all the premiums that come in from all the investors. Uh, and then we're the ones that are supposed to invest those in bonds and, or we, you know, we've chosen that a part of our portfolio is going to go into, um, you know, mortgages uh, throughout the country. So we, we deploy those through our correspondence uh, and we're predominantly um, a investment lender. We don't, we don't do owner occupied uh, once in a blue moon if it's really rare, but I would say, you know, it's, it's you know, the four food groups, you know, office, uh, retail, industrial, uh, multifamily, uh, is is the space that we we play in? Uh, we are a um, we can be a non recourse lender. I would say it has to generally fall probably under sixty five percent loan to value for us to be a, a non recourse, with certain okay. carve out provisions. 
Um, we, uh, we essentially, uh, we're pretty conservative. So we're not, we're not uh, going high leverage. Um, you know, we're, we're sort of, you know, we like equity in the project. Uh, we like good stable properties that, you know, are in good locations, um, you know, metropolitan areas, generally speaking, uh, you know, so th those are the types of loans that we, you know, or assets we look at, um, you know, we can do self storage, uh, you know, we do look at single tenant triple net stuff, but, you know, I'd say for the most part, you know, those are the major assets that we look at. Uh, we don't do construction at all. Okay, no construction. Yeah. What about anything like tenant improvements? Uh, we can do tenant improvements. Yep. I okay. mean, if, if now I would say if there's a building that fully needs to be built out, that's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, if it's if there's a new tenant that you just signed a lease with or something in a larger retail center and and they happen to need some TIs, you know, we're not really a you know, construction per se, but we, we will, um, we will, we, we can do things like that. So that, that's okay. a, a possibility for sure. And then, and you'd mentioned metro areas. Is that, uh, what, what states would that be in? Yeah, I would say, you know, we're, we're, we're all across the country and go in any state. Okay. Uh, you know, I would say that, you know, when I say metropolitan areas, MSAs of probably, you know, um, probably 2 million or higher in population. Um, and, uh, you know, we definitely, um, you know, we definitely are looking, um, you know, to, to stay with those quality areas. We don't, we're not big fans of smaller markets. Okay. Uh, you know, so. Then uh, what sort of what sort of loan amounts do you uh, do you look for? Yeah, we don't typically. I know there are life companies out there. I'd say we don't we don't really do anything under uh, a half a million dollars, or sorry, okay. five million dollars. Uh, so okay. we, we generally are not doing anything unless it's five million or higher. Uh, okay. You know, like I said, sixty five to maybe seventy percent. Um, you know, are, are the LTVs that we look at. Okay. And so no, no owner occupied at all, um, or you'll do owner occupied in some, in some rare cases. Yeah. Some rare cases, you know, if it's a really good tenant, you know, really good occupant that, that has a lot of financial strength then I, you know, I think we'd entertain it, but, you know, they, they'd have to be a, you know, pretty, pretty large local company that we would feel comfortable with, you know, so. And in those situations, what do you, what would you do for loan to value? Probably 75 at the max. I don't think we'd go higher than that. Okay. Okay. And then what sort of, uh, terms are you are, are you looking yeah, for we we do 25 year amortizations uh sometimes 20 but 25 is pretty normal uh mm -hmm. we'll do a five uh seven and ten year fixed loan uh we do yield maintenance as the prepayment penalty so um you know just you know, sort of that's that's our prepay provision, uh, non recourse with carve outs. Uh, we have uh, on that. Sorry, on the yield maintenance uh, provision. Is that I'm I'm familiar with like a step down uh, prepayment penalty. Is the yield maintenance? Is that something that uh, goes goes away, or how, how does that um, how does that work? Yeah, the, the yield maintenance is what we call a make whole provision. Uh, so what happens is that we look at the, the treasury market. Um, and if the, uh, the bond market, let's say that there's 10 years left in loan, there's five years left remaining, and somebody wants to pay our loan off, 
what we do is we will go look at the five-year bond market because that's how many years are left remaining. So it's the, the remaining term. Um, if the five-year bond is lower than our interest rate, then the client pays the difference between those two. Uh, so let's just say it's 2% and the loan's 4%. Uh, and so there's a 2% delta or difference. So we'd multiply that by the loan amount. Let's say it's a million dollars. That's $20,000 and then multiplied by five. So that'd be $100,000. So it can get fairly expensive uh, if there's a big gap between the bond market and, and, and our interest rate, essentially. Uh, the, the goal, if, if it's higher, then we, the client typically still has to pay 1% of the, uh, the balance uh, of the loan amount. But, uh, but generally speaking, I would say that, um, you know, th this is uh, very much a, you know, set it and forget it. If they want to do this loan, they're going to be in there for long term. It is assumable, uh, might I add, that someone could assume the loan, take over somebody else's loan, and just they have to pay the 1% origination. Uh, and so we, we've definitely done that, you know, before. Okay. Okay. So it's looking for, for somebody who wants long, a long-term loan and, yeah. so, and you do 25 year amortization and the, the five, seven or 10 year fixed period, what would the term on the loan be? Um, uh, as far as like a maturity date. We can go full 25. I mean, we could fix it for 10. So it'd be like a 10, 10, five. So fix for 10, adjust and fix for another 10 and then adjust and fix for five. So we, okay. could, we could go all the way out to 25 years. That's definitely part of our program. Okay. So it would be a 25 year fully amortized loan at that point? Yes. And then the rates would just reset at the end of the fixed period. Okay, Yes. that makes sense. Um, what, and then as far as rates go, um, are you basing them off of, a, off of an index or? Uh, how are rates calculated? Uh, rates are calculated based upon, we look out into the market, the bond market, but it's just an internal thing that we decide. We change the rates probably every couple of months. Um, so it's just whatever we quote is what we're going to issue the, uh, the term sheet and what we're going to close out. So we don't, okay. we don't like lock rate, uh, which it's just at the application, that's the rate you're going to get. Now, if you drag it out for 90 to 120 days, that could be that could be another you know, discussion point. But but yeah, that's that's kind of you know what what we do. Okay. Um, and then I guess typically what sort of interest rates are are you seeing as far as a range goes right now? Uh, we have been quoting stuff anywhere from, you know, I would say the mid threes uh right now to the high threes on a 10-year fix okay um you know our fees just so you know we we do not charge an origination fee but we do have between legal costs um and you know the third party report someone's going to probably pay you know somewhere in the ballpark of around $30,000 or so um, okay. in fees. So, you know, it's not, we're a little bit more expensive than a bank because we're going to get an Alta survey, uh, a phase one, a property condition assessment and an appraisal. So we're definitely get more reports uh, as well. And um, so, yeah, just, just an FYI on that. Okay. And, and kind of leads me to my, my next question then is it sounds like if there's a lot of reports required, what's timeline and what's kind of the process on your side for underwriting and reviewing and approving uh, deals that, that are sent your way from the correspondence? Yeah, I would say soup to nuts for probably 60 days uh, from the time we issue the application. Uh, that's when we've kind of gotten comfortable and issued terms that we think is going to be acceptable for everybody. That application will be reviewed and signed by the borrower uh, and then sent in with a good faith deposit of 1% of the loan amount. Um, that kicks us off to prepare everything to go into a final approval. 
So that usually takes about two weeks. So once we get everything that we've requested, we go into committee, we give a final approval, which, which we don't issue a new term sheet. It's just whatever the, the, the uh, application we sent, that's what, we, that's what is the commitment at that point. Um, what'll happen from there is that you'll, the borrower will send in another 1% uh, at that time. Uh, that will also be a part of covering the legal and the third party reports. Uh, and, and that is when we order all the third party reports. Uh, that's when we engage legal counsel because we are now then working on moving towards a close. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so when we move towards working on a close, uh, you know, that's, that's, Kind of the timeline we're just getting all the ancillary documents things like that we'll eventually issue the loan documents uh to the client to review and sign uh and then uh unless they start negotiating a bunch and uh, a bunch then we'll typically you know close in the timeline that we anticipated okay now as far as the underwriting and, and approval goes is there a committee approval or how many people are involved in, in that sort of process uh, it's, it's just a few of us in here. So it's, it's an informal committee that we have, you know, every couple of times a week. So it's not, it's not a formal, formal committee, but just, uh, you know, kind of a, a handful of us making the decision. Okay. Okay. And 60 days to close. Um, and is that, um, 60 days, so 60 days to close and what's the, what's the timeline for getting documents prepared or is, is that 60 days including uh, getting documents out and, and everything? That is uh, 60 days uh, soup to nuts. So okay. that, that's, that should be start to finish documents out, signed, sent back, uh, funded and recorded. So that's, okay. you know, sounds pretty efficient. Most of them, most of them work that way. Okay. And their attorney drafted documents. Um, yes. Is there any is there any room to negotiate on the borrower side with something like that or? Yeah, uh, there 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 is. Obviously, it's going to cost them, right? Um, and mm -hmm. we're not going to necessarily agree to everything, but you know, to the degree that they're reasonable changes, I would say that we're open to to looking at those. Okay. Um, and then, as far as when you're underwriting the properties, what sort of cash flow are you looking for? Um, are you looking like for like a 1.25 times or? Yeah, we, we underwrite with a five, usually market vacancy, but I'd say anywhere from five to 7% vacancy. We take about a uh, dollar a foot in reserves for underwriting, uh, you know, for TILC. And then we typically take 15 cents a foot for just general CapEx. So we take that and peel that off the cash flow get to a net cash flow, and then we'll go ahead and uh, use that as our number. So we need to be at about a one, two, five, uh, you know, location essentially. So. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, you'd mentioned that you can do non, uh, non recourse um, lending if it's 65% or lower on the loan to value. Um, and then you'd mentioned the, the dollar per square foot um for the for the cash reserves on the on the cash flow is there any other sort of like liquidity or cash reserve requirement that you want to see on the um sponsor side or the client side yeah the sponsor good question the sponsor we typically want them to be at about one and a half times uh the net net worth to the loan amount so okay. the loan amount's a million bucks you know, we want them to be, uh, you know, basically one and a half times, so million and a half. So okay. that, that's not hard and fast, but I would say we're pretty, pretty close to that. Um, so that's definitely an area that we, we, we want to stick with. Okay, makes sense. Um, and then you'd mentioned that you can do TI, um, you know, uh, on some of these. Is there any, any other... Um, you know, opportunities for cash out. Can clients do, you know, cash out refinances on uh, on these? 
They can do cash out refis. We are okay with that. Although if it's within a five year period uh, from when they bought it or built it, uh, we're, we're a little leery of going too much over the original cost basis. Uh, we typically like to see that they have at least, you know, 10% still into the, the project. So, so that, okay. would, that would be one thing. Okay. Um, and then uh, on the credit side, um, if we have clients with credit issues, um, is that something you take into consideration? Do they need to be squeaky clean or uh, is a, you know, a, a bankruptcy with an explanation okay? Um, I would say that um, we're, we're open to different things. So the story's got to be pretty compelling, mm -hmm. um, you know, but, you know, we're, we're open to it. I, I would say we're, we're conservative. So we're not looking for somebody that's got a track record of it, but, you know, we're, we're open to that for sure. Okay, great. Um, well, that answers the questions I had. Uh, I appreciate the information. It, if I could, uh, I guess if I can get an email address that I could reach out to you at, um, and then that way you can share uh, corresponding contact information with me. Um, and yeah. if you have any sort of distributions you make as far as rates or programs, if I can get on, uh, included on those um, emails, that'd be great. Yeah, happy to do that. My name, it's uh, T-E-G-G -G at, uh, leaf l-e-a-f-f-i-n dot com uh, so yeah so why don't you shoot me off uh your contact information and i will get you a couple of those correspondence and um and then we'll go from there so appreciate you uh, calling today it's nice to meet you tom yep thank you very much for your time tom i appreciate it have a good day you too